Ira Epstein of Linden & Associates with your financial market wrap up and this is for Monday the 20th of April 2020 and we're just about on the nose now at 3:15 uh, p.m. and this is central time so this will be the settlement price in the stock indices. The market will reopen at 3.30 and trade till four o'clock, but the price settlements will come in here. The event of the day, the biggest crash ever in crude oil. We're not talking a couple of dollars a barrel. We're talking, uh, it ended up at a negative $35 a barrel came in, maybe at 20, I'd have to look myself, but I've never seen anything like it. Number one, I've never seen crude oil prices go negative. So that was an education for me. And I've been doing this five generations, well, 50 years, <laughs> it's a long time. Uh, I've seen a commodity go to zero in the past. I never saw it go negative. And I didn't even know if the computers could do it or if they'd allow it, and it did. So to make a long story short, there's no storage facility nearby for crude that isn't accounted for. Got the difference? Yeah, Cushing still has some room, but it's accounted for. So if you take delivery, what are you gonna do with it? Rent a vessel and hold it offshore? I guess you have to. Freight rates have gone through the roof. So in effect, what has happened is Russia and the Saudis together have taken America's oil equation out and the president is concerned about it, and rightly so. It is a threat to our self-dependence. Crude oil can be produced by the Saudis for about $10 a barrel. Russia lets its currency moves take care of the gyrations in that for periods of time. We don't do all that, and this is the pain that we're gonna feel. So with this break today, you're gonna to see even more rigs shut down. So we keep losing them, and that means our production numbers are gonna come down like that. Tomorrow, the Texas Oil Commission meets. And my guess is, uh, with this, they'll probably have to put some type of quotas on. They, they have to get stability back into the market. They don't have to do anything, but that's what I think. It certainly weighed on the futures market. The, uh, the currency market didn't really pay attention to it. I think it realized this is a one-off event for the May crude oil, something nobody's ever seen. And remember, it stops trading tomorrow, and anybody in there, why are you in there? That's the first question you've got to ask. Then we take a look at, at the bonds and the notes. They're getting a bid again. So we're looking at yields fall right there. When we come to the stock indices, we're gonna start off the week, and today's the first day of the week, down 63 and a half points or 2.21%. The big question, of course, is on this rally, was that it? I can't answer that at this point. What I can tell you is the market seems to be stuck in this 50% bounce range. That's all that I know. If it got up like the uh, NASDAQ to over 60%, then I'd be saying it's going to be very hard to get back to these lows. 50%, no. 50%, it's not the same as stalling at a 38% retracement, but it still says that there's some room that could be made on the downside. The chart action isn't calling for that. The chart action has been one of higher lows, and this is what a swing line does. This is a chart without swing lines. When I put the swing line on it, you get to see, is the market trending? I define trend. If the market's making higher highs, higher lows, the trend is up. Lower highs, lower lows, trend down. No trend has in some sequence a higher high and a lower low, or first a lower low and then a higher high. But it's not a stair step one way or the other. This is still in an uptrend until the market takes out 27.46. In terms of moving averages, the market got away from them back at the beginning of April. We're now 20 days later, and we've gone into that big bounce from the March panic low, where a lot of traders don't think this will be tested again. Okay. Resistance, if you keep rallying, back up here at 3010 to 3035. When we look at Bollinger Bands, you got up there about a week ago. And last week, you didn't spend any time doing that. You sort of drifted around in the market. In terms of momentum, it's still very bullish. Why? When the slow stochastic study, which is an oscillator of momentum, sees the two lines that make it up. One's called a K line, a D. I call them red and blue. It's easy for you. And they're going sideways over 80 for several days or more. I say that the market converted from overbought to locking in a bull trend. If they're going sideways under 20 for several days or more, then I'm saying 
it's converted from being oversold to locking in a bear trend. And it did not do that here. Uh, it refused to do it. I think it might have done it right here. And when you lost it, when the red got back over the 20 level, well, prices began in a sense. Well, if they lose this bullish reading, I expect them to begin a descent. When we take a look at the NASDAQ, this is the chart that's the strongest of the indices. Uh, the market keeps hitting the upper Bollinger Band, unlike the S&P. It's over the 200 day average, it's over the 100 day average in green, 200 day in the gray, and the 18. Now, will the 18 cross over any of these, or is this market setting itself up for a pullback at any point here that means you just get up there, you kiss it, and you roll back down? I'm wondering. And that's all I'm left doing, wondering. In the Dow, you're still bullish. You still have the higher lows, higher highs, but like the S&P, you're not getting back to the upper Bollinger Band, the black dashed line here. You're keeping an uptrend, and for all three of these indices, lose the embedded reading, and I think you resume. In fact, I think you start a correction from this upside move that we had. How deep a correction? That'll be the big question. In the Russell, the market is also in an uptrend with higher lows, higher highs. Unlike the other indices, it never did get an embedded reading. It's just overbought. It is the weakest looking still of all the indices. In the VIX, we got a bounce today to carry the 43.83. So what this market did late in the day is it took out this 43.23. That's going to force me to reverse these arrows tomorrow. For you. If the market gets the red line over 20, it's the flip flop of the stocks, I'm going to look for price to hit the 18 day average of closes. Right now, it is still very bearish. The slow stochastics, when they embed, rule the chart. Until they're lost, in the case of this, even though the market hit 43.83, the bears are very much in control of that chart. In the T bond market, what we did is we came in from the Bollinger Bands that widened out off these big moves. Remember the move up here, the, the panic in March, everybody was buying these because the stock market was coming apart. Then the correction, and now the sideways action. As that's occurred, you're narrowing in the Bollinger Bands, it's like a pipe. You're putting pressure in it, and now the question is, which way does the market move out of that pipe next? We're not in a trend. We have a lower low, higher high. The resistance is marked by the upper Bollinger Band at 182.19. The support starts at the 18-day average at 179.24, and the lower supports 176.28. I call it sideways. When we come to the 10-year note, the market has a pattern of higher lows, higher highs, bullish. But it's hit its upside target. It got just about to it yesterday, uh, Friday. Uh, the, the upper Bollinger Band was 139.18. We hit 139.14 and had an outside day down. Overbought, I think the pros are taking some money off the table. And I realize the market's up here today, but it's still overbought in more or less a sideways configuration. In the dollar index, it's trying to give you a setup. And the question is, is it bullish or bearish? Let me explain. You currently have lower high, you had lower low. With today's settlement price, you're gonna have higher low, lower highs. So you're forming in like a V formation into this right now. Take out 139, the setup turns bullish and you're looking for wherever this upper Bollinger Band is. It'll drop tomorrow. It's been dropping to the tune of about, and you got to pay attention to this thing, about 50 points a day. So it's going to be right on top of this number or close to it tomorrow. If the market takes out 99.66 and doesn't take out 139, you get a bear signal. You resume the pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You'd be under the 18-day average, and the pros would be looking for wherever the lower band comes in. And that number's moving at about 40 points a day, 30 to 40 right now. So it's probably going to be something around the 98.80 level, a little more room to the downside than to the upside is the way to look at that. In the euro currency, void of trend. Higher high, lower low package. I wouldn't be surprised if you go back to the 18-day average and just try to figure out what's going to be next. This has been 
a very, very hard market to trade. It went from way up here to the 115, straight on down there, one, just under 107, back to 111, back down to 107 in a fraction, and it's finally narrowing in. Some of the volatility is starting to come out of the market. In the Japanese yen, you have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows. Now, if you, if you get back and close under 92.50, the 100-day average, which is under the 18, you'd get an out and out, at least on my work, I'd get an out and out bear signal looking for the potential of the market to make a run at the lower band. Why? I've already got momentum pointing down, that's why. And I've got the swing line down, so I'm just looking for it to reaffirm something under these key averages. If it doesn't do that and stays above them, then while the swing line is down and momentum's down, the bias is up and you're left in no man's land. June Bitcoin pulled back in the sideways action to that line in the sand, that 18-day average. That's the neutral number as I teach it on a chart. So what has the market got? It has a pattern of a lower low, a higher high, has not been able to get to a Bollinger Band since all the way back here, and I believe that's sometime in the March time frame. So it's been a very, very long time, and it's basically just drifting sideways at this point. Now we get to the June Brent versus June crude, not the May. The May, as I told you, a crazy day today. And this spread has widened out very dramatically, but duh, if you've taken the front month of crude down to a negative $35 a barrel, you heard me, a negative $35 a barrel, it weighs on the June. So no matter what crude does, it's got an anchor on it. It's being pulled backwards. Now, if you go way out a year down the road in the futures markets, you see $33 a barrel because the market's a futures market. It's anticipating what the future might or might not be. So traders look at that and they try to get a feel. But for the near term, this spread certainly in favor of Brent, which is being more or less controlled by the OPEC plus than what's going on in America where our oil companies, our drillers and so on are absolutely getting decimated. Credit crunches are gonna happen. You're going to see companies fail by the droves. You're gonna see the big companies able to gobble up assets. This is the time to have a strong balance sheet and go shopping for your competitors' assets. Hate to say it, it's the way the world works. In the Brent, you can see how the market is still bearish on its own. So don't get me wrong, I'm not talking bullish at all, but it is oversold. Will it be able to get to the lower Bollinger Band? It hasn't been able to do that since the beginning of March. So you've stayed more or less in this sideways pattern that has a bearish bias to it. WTI, you got down to the lower band. Win, lose, draw. I think the pros were taking money off the table. I mean, you took the lead contract down 50 some odd dollars today into negative territory and all you can do in the June is break it down four dollars so the market's looking ahead and it's saying maybe it won't be as bad a time then I don't know where are you gonna get all that space if the US economy doesn't pick up you're really counting that we're not gonna have any oil production that could happen but is it gonna happen quick enough to overwhelm and support the market that's what I don't know without the refiners making jet fuel gasoline other products, there's no bid to speak of in these energies that make sense. At least to me, I, I guess you, if you could store it long enough and hold it long enough, $20 crude's gonna make you money. It doesn't spoil, it, it can stay in storage, so it's not a food product. Uh, gasoline, narrow, look at the Bollinger Band. That was your warning. Once they narrow in like that, the churn process begins. You think you're going up, you don't. You run into the Bollinger Band, you think you're going down, you run into the 18-day average of closes. Now the question is, can it set up a trend from here? And that's what we're waiting for. Last in the nat gas, I've been mentioning every time you're gonna close down US oil wells, you're gonna have less natural gas produced. So this market's getting a bullish bias on everything, up 15 cents today, not for demand as much as it is, you're gonna have less supply. Less supply is part of the equation that sets up pricing, and that's what this market's doing. It's not here quite yet, but it's, it, believe me, it's at your neighbor's house coming here to deliver our dinner tonight. 
So as we take a look, one of the tools I use during the day are pivot points. I look to see if markets are getting extended with them. I look to consider them, gee, I want to enter the market at such and such number. Does that make any sense for the day traders that are working today? And this is primarily a day traders tool. They'll look at this tool to get what we call the pivot point. Then they've got resistance points they may want to sell into other areas they may want to buy into. And they're trying to pop back and forth. It is not a position trading tool. The way that I teach it, you really are going home with no position at the end of each and every trade day. And one of the things that I like to do with it is tie my momentum of my slow stochastic with it. So how do you get this? Well, it's simple. You go to our website. It's a three-part video series. Fill out the form for the offering. It's again free. We'll make sure you get the three videos and you have your access to it. How do you get it? Go to our website. Look under free offers. You'll see it there. Click us right here. If you're watching us on YouTube, it'll take you right to that page as well. With that, I'm I. Rapstein. You have a good day and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.